you cannot bite me to get pets, okay? Welcome back to a new Sambanits podcast episode. I'm Beatriz, I'm the designer behind Sambanits and I come to you from Santiago de Chile. Today um, it's me and my sleepy co-host over there, Cachupina, you already know her. Whenever I uh, set up the things uh, to record a podcast, <laughs> she <laughs> jumps in the couch. I think she, she likes to participate, I think she likes the, <laughs> the attention. <laughs> yeah, it's right, Cachupina. She's doing much better uh, from the ear thing she had. Uh, I took her to a vet control last week and everything was fine. I just have to take her again now in a month uh, to check uh, how it's progressing. But for now, everything is it's great uh, and she, she's doing much better, I think. I haven't seen her with the... Um, yes, I'm talking about you. I haven't seen her doing the uh, tilted ear thing that uh, she was doing and yeah, she, as usual, she has her great um, personality, <laughs> um, loves to eat, loves to play, loves to get some uh, head scratches and stuff um, and the attention, uh, but yeah. Um, I haven't finished anything uh, since our last episode, but I do have a couple of finished objects, of old finished objects that I would like to share with you. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So yeah, the first um, finished object, old finished object I wanted to talk to you about is this sweater. It's the Mariposa sweater. It's a pattern of mine that went live last year, around March, I think, or somewhere around there. Uh, it's a DK weight sweater worked bottom up. Uh, I use Miss Bab Sialza DK for the sample in colorway Fiddlehead, and I love this sweater. I, I loved working on the sample, um, and I loved designing it. It was a great challenge for me at the time and I worked uh, I learned a lot and I worked a lot to get it right um, with the test meters and the tech editor and uh, I couldn't be happier with the <laughs> result if I'm being honest um, it's all worked in this lip stitch um, pattern that looks sort of like a butterfly mariposa means butterfly in Spanish and that's why it's called mariposa and when we are up close, you can see the, the butterfly, but when you take a step back, I think it sort of just like looks like, um, like it gives a 3D effect, like a, a depth to, uh, to the body of the sweater. And it's very fun because I have, I have said this already here before, uh, slip uh, stitch patterns are, I think, one of my favorites because you don't work the stitch, so it goes super fast, and um, I really like it. <laughs> and DK weight is also, I think, one of my favorite weights of yarn. It's not uh, too thin, not too heavy. Um, it works great for lace, cable, slip stitch patterns, and yeah. Um, so. And then you, you have this lip stitch pattern here, and then um, this like sort of broken rib. Um, it's, a, it's a slip stitch broken rib pattern here. That uh, here on the front, and also let me show you on the back. And yeah, um, it's and drop shoulder sleeves, uh, kind of a boxy fit. The pattern comes in nine sizes, uh, ranging from a 30 inch bust until a 62 inch bust. Uh, and it's supposed to be worn with lots of positive ease, um, around a f uh, six inches, maybe even 12 inches of positive ease. I, I'm not, I don't remember exactly how, how much this has on me now. I think 
it was around 8 or 10 maybe it's on the pattern page if you look there I'm gonna link it down below but if you look on the pattern page on driver and pay hip um, and on my website it uh, it says how much of positive is uh, it has on me but yeah uh, if it's one of my favorite uh, sweaters to, to wear I'm I really like how it turned out and it's it's very comfortable um, I love like drop shoulder boxy style sweaters um, and yeah and it's the mariposa sweater I hope you like it so the second uh, pattern I wanted to share with you today is the Yara wrap it's my pattern that just went live last week it's a lace um, lace pattern in fingering light fingering weight um, it's worked in two identical pieces and then uh, you join them using um, uh, kitchener stitch it's almost invisible the seam um, this is not the seam this is a fold from where uh, from how it was folded in my in my closet um, yeah this um, Yara is a very common Brazilian girl's name and comes from the myth of the mermaid of the river mermaid Yara uh, from its um, uh, folklore a Brazilian folklore uh, of this mermaid that used to sing a beautiful melody and men would fall in love with her and follow her into the river um, and I, I thought that I'm the green reminded me of a mermaid. And um, also the shape here of the lace it remind me remind me of a mermaid's tail, I think. <laughs> so I named it Yara. Um, I worked this sample in Isagar uh, yarn. Uh, Highland wool in colorway turquoise um, and uh, when I first got this yarn I thought I wanted to design a garment a color work uh, garment but I wasn't feeling it it I, I think the yarn knows what it wants to become so it, it wasn't working I frogged like two, two or three times and then I, uh, I just left it there for a couple of months and then I I, I came up with this this wrap um, it's softened uh, a lot um, after um, blocking and it opened a lot as well it was like uh, I won't say half the size but almost I would say like two-thirds of the, the this final size and I, I love uh, designing wraps um, like like this they I think they are um, you cannot bite me to get pets okay but I feel when she gets like this she, she starts biting me too <laughs> so I can pay attention to her um, yeah so um, uh, this pattern is available on Ravelry and Payhip and you can find the links for that uh, I'm gonna leave the um, the links here down below um, yeah it's I, I love working lace I think lace has a rhythm that um, and it's also d delicate and I don't know uh, uh, it's one of my favorite things to, to work but yeah it's the Yara wrap this way could you be now so now you know it's my being one or time um, I have worked on this uh, this is a two weekends project because we have um, two weekends since our last episode and I didn't work on this even though it was a holiday here Monday I did not work on this so it was really just Sunday Saturday and Sunday work um, it's um, I frogged the um, one of the fronts 
I, I, I told I talked about it last episode that I wasn't happy with the color placement and I have frogged uh, up to a point uh, I decided to frog more and work all the fronts I think almost all the pattern is worked in uh, two yarns held together um, usually like variegated or speckled or I hold a tunnel with us uh, variegated to get this effect um, just here I used uh, for this welt and for the, um, the finishing of the sleeves I, I used I'm sorry um, the um, a solid color and I, I like it much better like this uh, my uh, stash has shrunk significantly since uh, I started working on this and um, I cannot recommend this pattern more it's super fun it's addictive as well uh, because the pieces that you work are usually small like this or just like apart from the back that's a, a big uh, piece all, all the the others are usually like as small of, as a swatch or something if you if you think about it so it's it's quite fast and you always want to get to the next part and the next part and the next part and then when you see you have worked almost the whole thing um, now I'm working the bottom hem I can and yeah, I just I have my needle here uh, and this are gonna it's gonna surely gonna take me a while because it's almost 300 stitches I think um, and yeah um, I didn't fade here it's just I just placed my co similar color looking colors and also here I didn't um, but I got I think I got quite good transitions um, it's funny uh, how uh, when I when I went to get my stash to, um, to work this um, how my color choices have changed uh, through, the, um, through time I think I used to like more um, not muted but more um, yeah, muted maybe like polish colorways I would say like autumn looking and brown and like more toned down I think and lately I have been very much drawn to more bright colorways and I don't know <laughs> I was just thinking about it because these are all stash uh, I, I didn't get any new yarn to work this these were all uh, yarns I had from my stash and um, most of them were leftovers um, I had 150 grams skein of alpaca for the brown here I had one skein of the variegated uh, pink and grey here the yellow as well and these were full skeins and this one as well um, that I used on the back and in other places uh, of the um, of the sweater if uh, almost all the sweater is worked in variegated speckled um, or uh, even uh, self striping here I use a self striping yarn together with uh, I think it was a variegated and here it was also two self stripings together I didn't plan I, I didn't how to say didn't want to make them match uh, but they ended up matching on some parts but anyways um, and here as well uh, I'm very very happy I, I only used solid solids for the um, for the welts and the uh, finishing of the sleeves I love this pattern. I I'm sure I'm gonna want I'm gonna work another one uh, in the future. It's fun because uh, all the sections are so small, so you just want to keep on 
Er det fair? Det er nå... They are not much bigger than a swatch, so it just takes like, I don't know, a mm, couple of hours to make this. Uh, except for the back, the back is actually big and um, the hem that I am now, I know it's gonna take me probably uh, this whole weekend to work the hem. But that's it. And uh, the rest um, is so, so fast. Um, I cannot wait to wear it and um, yeah, this is my pink guano from Stephen West. Um, I love it and if you ever thought of casting it, it on, I definitely recommend it. You're not gonna regret it, it's a super fun pattern. <laughs> I think this is all for today. I hope you enjoyed spending this time with me and uh, if you did, please uh, like this video and subscribe. Uh, I was told the other day that I should say this uh, on the podcast to get more subscribers. So yeah, please, if you did, uh, click the subscribe button right down there. And um, yes, I uh, hope to see you guys soon and have a great weekend. And yeah, happy knitting. Bye.